What's up everyone, Leviathan here with another build video. Today I'm going to be building the Newbie Drone Cinema Frame. This is going to be a 6S version, as I already have a 4. The parts I'll be using is a Newbie Drone 200 4 one ESC, a Newbie Drone Infinity 200 flight controller, Newbie Drone 1404 2350 KV motors for 6S, a TBS Crossfire Nano, Cadex Vista Digital FPV system, I'll also be using some gem fan 76mm 5 blade props, and we got options, duct inserts, frame guards, Hero 8 mount, the Newbie Drone man strap, and foam pads. All of the 3D printed parts in this build video will be available to download and print yourself on the Newbie Drone website. 1408 motors are okay for the duct inserts, but if you're going to use something with a lower profile like, like 2004 motors, the duct inserts won't work because the props will hit the ducts. So if you want some prop strike protection, you'll need to use the foam pads. Here are all the carbon fiber parts of the frame. As you can see, the top plate already has an UmaGrip style battery pad installed. So let's go ahead and figure out how to lay out the electronics. The back of the top plate can be identified by these two little notches, and the top by the battery pad. I'm going to place the Cadex Vista here towards the back in the rear 20x20 hole pattern. I'll put the stack in the front 20x20 hole pattern, starting with the ESC and the flight controller on top of that. The flight controller forward position should be set to make it easier, which you can identify by a little white arrow pointing forward. As you can see though, the rubber grommets on the two boards are too short and the two touch, so I'll need to replace those with taller grommets, which are included with the flight controller. I'll start by getting those swapped over. So now that those are swapped over, you can see that the two boards no longer touch. Now I'm installing the boards upside down, so changes in the Betaflight configuration will need to be made to compensate, which I'll cover at the end of the video. Before mounting anything, I'm going to solder up the wiring for the Vista. The wire harness plugs into the front of the flight controller, so I'll plug it in to get an estimate of the length I need. Then I'll cut to length and solder to the Vista. I recommend cutting larger than you think, for obvious reasons. The wiring harness is pinned in order for the Vista, so I'll start with the red positive wire and solder it to the pad underneath the antenna mount. Then I'll solder the rest in order left to right. One really great thing about the Newbie Drone Cinema is that they include mounting hardware for the Vista. 2mm screws this long aren't common, so it makes things a lot easier. Using the included hardware, I'll mount the Vista to the back of the frame. I'll add the standoffs to space the Vista away from the frame, and then secure it with the nuts. Once the Vista is mounted, I'll mount the ESC and flight controller. Step 1 is to solder the battery power lead to the ESC. The way I like to run the lead is through the center square of the frame, so I'll do that now. I also soldered the included capacitor directly to the ESC. Notice the minus sign on the cap, denoting the ground side. Also note, I have the silicone of the power and ground wire touching the ESC pads. This helps prevent unwanted shorts. Next, I'll install the ESC and flight controller. I wanted to take a moment to pause this video and tell you one thing that Newbie Drone brought up to me. You can actually, and they actually recommend that you do not flip the flight controller upside down when installing it, but actually flip it so when it is built, it is pointing in the up direction. And the reasoning behind this is that the gyro is actually, on the way I'm building it, the gyro is out in the open and exposed. And if anything rubs on that, like wires or whatever, it will affect the way that the frame flies. So they recommend that you flip the flight controller over and install it the correct way up. And if you do that, the setting for the board orientation will change. And you also will need to add another nylon nut inside to space it a little further from the flight controller so that the USB cable or the USB port doesn't rub on the ESC. I recommend adding a plastic nut between the ESC and the frame. Another thing I recommend is running the Vista camera wire either under the ESC or flight controller to keep it out of the way. Connect the ESC to the flight controller using the included harness and connect the Vista to the flight controller. Here's everything connected and wired up. Next I'll connect the antenna to the Vista. It's kind of tricky, but release or loosen the one screw holding the tab. Connect the antenna and secure it with the tab. This is what it should look like. Go ahead and set this part aside and let's mount the motors to the arms. Get the included 3D printed motor pads and the M2 by 6mm screws. Take the screws and get them started in the motor pads so they're held in place. I'm not using the screws included with the motors because I need a little extra length with this frame.
Once that's done, I'll grab a horizontal and a vertical carbon plate and slot them together. Also, slot the motor mount disc and get the screws screwed in flush with the disc. Then screw down the motors, making sure to keep the motor wire pointed towards the center of the frame. Secure the motor and repeat those steps three more times. Once done, it should look like this, with the wires pointing in towards the center of the frame. At the time of this recording, the motor wires aren't long enough for the rear motors to reach the ESCs, so they will need to be extended. Nibidron has told me that the next batch of the 1408 motors will have extended wires. It's kind of a pain, but I'm just going to get it done. Next, I'll pre-tin the solder pads of the ESC. You should end up with something like this. Now it's time for the hardest part of the build. Make sure to have the longer motor wires in the rear and fit the arms to the top plate. Then grab the needed hardware. I'll be using the M2 by 8mm screws and the M2 nuts. Hold the two frame parts together and fit the nut into the slot. I have a finger behind the plate to hold the nut and then I'll fit the screw in and screw it down. Don't tighten it all the way so that the frame can come together flat. Repeat that with all the nine remaining perimeter mounting locations. After they're all started, I'll tighten them down working inside to out and side to side. Now I'll run the motor wires towards the ESC and secure them with zip ties. Make sure they won't interfere with the props or duct inserts if used. Here are some shots of how I ended up doing it. These zip ties will interfere with the duct inserts, but I don't plan to use them. I'm going to install the two remaining carbon plates since they won't really interfere with the ability to solder the wires to the ESCs. The plates also have screw nut mounts here, here, and here. These two tabs are for mounting the action camera. I'll go ahead and get those plates slotted in and secured. Next I'll mount the FPV camera. There is an arrow on the back of the camera which indicates the up direction. I'll go ahead and set my camera angle now as well. Now I'll trim the motor wires to length and solder them up. Order doesn't matter because we're going to set up the motor directions in BLHeli. It should look something like this when done. Now I'll install the Crossfire Nano. If you're using the Vista for control also, you can skip this step. On the Crossfire Nano, the square pad is ground. Then you have power and the TX pad, which will go on the RX of the flight controller and the RX pad, which will go to the TX on the flight controller. Now I'll solder the wires to the Nano and shrink wrap the board. Next I'm going to find a place to mount the Nano with uh, some two-sided sticky tape. I'm just going to find a spot that works for me, making sure not to attach it over the flight controller's gyro so it doesn't interfere with it. Once it's attached, I'll solder it to the flight controller using the RX2 and TX2 pads. Also wire the power and ground to an available 5 volt pad and ground pad. Should look something like this when done. Now I'm going to install the antenna mount with the included standoff and attach it to one of the holes in the back of the frame. If using it, get the Immortal T antenna mounted first. Then I'll install the man strap, which is the 3D printed battery strap. It attaches to these two tabs on the back and the two tabs here on the side. I'm going to use a GoPro with this build, so I'll install the 3D printed mount next. Just press two standoffs through the holes of the mount and screw the mount into the tabs protruding from the frame. Another accessory for this frame are the frame guards, which would install on all the spots where the motor arms attach to the top plate. I won't be using them since I plan to use the frame pads, but to show them, I'll install one. Just remove the screw, hold the nut in place, slot the pad in and screw it back down. Now I'll fit the frame pads and stick them to the frame. The thicker pad goes on the bottom and the thinner on the top. After they're stuck to the frame, squeeze the top and bottom pads together around the outside.
Finally, install the remaining standoffs to the frame. The mount locations are here, 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 and here. I'll only be using three of the four possible mount locations because of where I installed the Crossfire Nano. Okay, the frame is completely put together. So now it's time for the configuration. So join me on the computer. Okay, so here we are on the computer. And the first thing we wanna do is we wanna update the firmware. So make sure you click on the update firmware tab right here, have the flight controller connected to the computer and make sure you've got Newbie Drone Infinity F4 selected here and then go with the latest one, which looks like 4.2.11. So we'll select that one. And we're gonna hit load firmware online right there. And once it's loaded, go ahead and hit flash firmware. My firmware is already flashed, so I'm not gonna do that, but it'll sit here and load. And then once it's done, we will pick up where we left off. Okay, once that's done, the next thing we'll do is we're going to load the dump file for this build. Now this dump file only works for this quadcopter as built in this video. Any changes you may make will change things inside of Betaflight. So just use this one if you're building it exactly like this. This is a bundle kit, so uh, you should have all the same components that we had in this if you bought the bundle kit. Now you can find the text dump file from the product page for the Cinema Bundle Kit. So go there and there should be a couple of options for you to choose from. Uh, the one that we'll be using is the one with Crossfire with the flight controller installed upside down. Now it is possible to install the flight controller right side up. We did upside down because I like the little bit of extra space between the ESC and the flight controller. So that's the one we're going to do here. So go ahead and plug the flight controller into the computer and hit connect. And then let's travel over to the CLI tab. And here we're gonna load from file. And we're going to choose the one that we want, which is the Cinema Crossfire. It'll probably be named something different. This is just what I have it named here. And hit open. And then go ahead and execute, and that should make all the changes. One good thing I always like to do is I like to watch as the scrolling text goes by and see if anything red pops up. Usually if something red pops up, it means that there's something that it can't apply, and it might be worth noting what that is and make sure that something isn't wrong. Okay, once that's done or the batch is complete, go ahead and click in here and write uh, save and that will exit and reboot the flight controller. Okay, once you're connected to the flight controller, the first thing I like to do is make sure that the receiver is being read. Uh, I tend to run into times where it doesn't work and so it's always the first thing I want to troubleshoot. So I'm going to go ahead and apply power to the drone. Remember my props are off, so there's no risk of a flyaway or anything like that. We're going to navigate over here to the receiver tab and make sure that, yep, there we go. So we have roll is roll, pitch is pitch, yaw is yaw, and throttle is throttle. So that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it now. Uh, not needed to be powered on right now. And I'm gonna turn off my radio. Okay, so the very next thing we want to do is we wanna make sure that the motors are spinning the right direction. Now they'll almost definitely not be spinning in the right direction because when we started the motors, we weren't paying attention to it being correct. So click over to the motors tab here. One Actually, one other thing I wanted to point out is that I, have this as um, motor, uh, the props in direction. A lot of people like props out. I think Newbie Drum prefers props in on these type of ducted frames. Uh, they tell me that it flies better with props in when you're using ducts. So I don't know how true or not true that is, but that's how they do it and they recommend it. So I would recommend to do it the same way. Uh, other than that, let's go to the motors tab. So you can see which direction that you're gonna want each motor to spin for a props in configuration. So we'll go to the motors tab. Remember the props are off here at this point. And so click that you understand that if the props aren't off, your fingers are your fault. So go ahead and plug it in with the battery power. Okay. And so we're going to spin up motor one, make sure it is motor one. Cause remember we did have the ESC installed upside down. The text file should have rewrote your motor mapping to be correct. So make sure one spins one and note the direction. So my one is correct. My two is spinning incorrectly, the incorrect direction, but it's on the right motor. Uh, three is also incorrect, but on the right motor. And four is spinning correctly. So it looks like we need to switch two and three, but all the motors are lined up for one being one, two being two, three being three, so on and so forth. Okay, so uncheck here. And next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna load up, go ahead and disconnect from Betaflight and we're gonna load up VL Heli 32 Suite. And then over here, we're gonna make sure that we have the right COM port selected, which should be the same that it is in Betaflight over here. 
and hit read setup. Okay, so remember we said two and three were spun incorrectly, so we have our motor direction here. We're gonna disconnect or deselect one, so that will apply this to motor number two, the blue one right here. And we want to switch from reverse to normal and write that setup. Okay, and then we also said that three was incorrect, so we're gonna deselect two, that turns three blue. And same thing, we're gonna go from reverse to normal and write setup. Okay, once that's done, you can go to Motors tab here, or if you're more comfortable in Betaflight, go into Betaflight. But since we already have this loaded up, I'll show you both ways to do it. So we're gonna go into the Motors tab here. It works exactly like Betaflight does, uh, so you understand that your props are off, and otherwise your fingers are your fault. And then we're going to go ahead and, we could just spin up all four and have a look at the spinning direction of all the motors. And everything is spinning properly now for me. Okay, good. So we'll go ahead and disconnect from here. Uh, I believe, yeah, I think you can just go to ESC setup and then, no, oh, it's disconnected. Okay, go ahead and disconnect power from the frame. And let's go ahead and head back over to Betaflight and reconnect to that. And I wanna point out a couple of other things that you may or may not wanna change. Uh, in the configurations tab here, uh, we have the gyro update and PID loop frequency at 8K, 8K, which is bringing our CPU load up kind of uh, a little bit. Uh, I know with Betaflight 4.3, that's gonna jump up a lot, but the way that they're measuring it is a little bit different. So if you're caring about that, because we do have our accelerometer on, that's gonna cause that percentage to go up. You can drop this down to 4K. It will affect the tune a little bit, but that is something worth noting. Um, also make sure that you have your uh, bi-directional D-Shot selected here, which all this should be in the dump file. It should be good, but just a couple of things to look for for safety reasons. And make sure that the motor pulls is 12. Again, if you're using the motors that I'm using, then 12 is the correct number. Other than that, let's head over to the PID tuning tab. Now, when I tuned this, I tuned it with sliders only. Uh, my goal was to get a good flying quad. Anything above this tune right here starts to become feel somewhat and not so much how good the frame flies. Like the frame is flying great in these settings here. So a lot of people might change their fast or feed forward settings. Some people like it more soft. Some people like it even harder. Um, I just, I pay attention to the tracking of the gyro tabs. I actually put a black box logger on here so I can uh, and get everything as good as I like. And then in the rate profile, this is something, these are my settings on actual. Uh, I think that the text file may be edited to have the default in here and not mine. That's something that Newbie Drone is gonna take care of, but just pay attention to what these numbers are. And then with the filters, we are one notch below being into the expert mode style. Um, I didn't have any problems going to this point here, and I think there's plenty of room to go higher, but I am trying to tune for a frame that works for everybody out of the box without any problems. So sometimes if you build something or uh, build something a little off or you get a motor, I mean a prop that's a little bit bent, then once you have these things really, really, really tight, then it can affect the, the flight of the drone and actually make it dangerous. So these are kind of safe settings. The other thing that you'll probably want to change is on the modes tab on my radio, I have it arming on AUX2. Uh, that will probably be not where you want it. So you'll have to change it there. And then uh, you'll definitely want to put on flip over on crash. I didn't put it on, um, just I didn't need it, but it is an excellent thing to have. And obviously mess with all the settings in here all you want. Other than that, that should be good to go for your 6S Cinema build. And after that, go fly, have fun. And if anything is a little weird or wonky, obviously reach out to Newbie Drone and they'll do their best to take care of it. Uh, they are awesome like that. So I hope this was informative. I hope you learned something and I hope you get this frame built and start loving to fly it. Thank you for watching.